motherfucking Korvac, Captain Terry Richardson roared as he stormed onto the bridge of the UNS Indefatigable. That slimy lizard shit has had his last laugh. The bridge crew paused, staring at their seething captain, his rugged face twisted with rage. They knew Korvas, the brilliant Tsenkethi general, had been a thorn in the side of the UNS for months, leaving nothing but death and ruin across human colonies. But this time was different. This time the UNS brass had a plan, a plan so insane, so unpredictable, that only a madman like Captain Richardson and his squad of misfit marines, the renegades, could pull it off. Richardson stood at the helm as the indefatigable hurtled through hyperspace towards Corfia Prime, the heart of the Tsenkethi Empire. His mission, infiltrate the most heavily fortified stronghold in the galaxy, assassinate General Korvac, and obliterate the Central Command Center, all in less than 24 hours. It was a suicide mission, but for Richardson and his battle-hardened Marines, it was just another day in the Corps. They were the best of the best, hand-picked for their skills, their bravery, and their sheer audacity in the face of impossible odds. As the ship dropped out of hyperspace on the fringes of the Corfia system, Richardson gathered his men in the hangar bay. He looked each marine in the eye, seeing the determination, the fearlessness, the hunger for vengeance. Listen up, renegades, Richardson barked, his voice booming over the hum of the engines. The Tsenkethi think they've seen everything. They think they're invincible behind their fancy shields and their big fucking guns. A murmur of agreement rippled through the assembled marines. But they ain't never seen anything like us, Richardson continued, a feral grin spreading across his face. They ain't never faced the sheer balls-to-the-wall insanity of the human race when our backs are against the wall. And that's exactly what we're going to show them. The marines roared their approval slamming their fists against their chests in the traditional renegade salute. "'We've got one shot at this,' Richardson said, his voice dropping to a growl. "'One chance to strike at the heart of those scaly bastards and make them regret the day they ever fucked with humanity. So let's get in there, kick some Tsenkethi ass, and show them what happens when you piss off Terry Richardson and the renegades.' "Ora!" the Marines bellowed, their voices echoing through the hangar bay. As the indefatigable slipped into orbit around Corfia Prime, its stealth systems masking it from the planet's defences, Richardson felt a surge of adrenaline coursing through his veins. This was it. The moment of truth. The fate of humanity rested on the shoulders of him and his men. And God help any Tsenkethi son of a bitch who tried to stand in their way. The indefatigable shuddered as it pierced the dense atmosphere of Corfia Prime, its cloaking device shielding the ship from the planet's advanced sensor network. In the dimly lit cargo bay, Captain Richardson gathered his hand-picked team of marines, each one a specialist in their field. All right, renegades, listen up, Richardson barked, his eyes gleaming with a mix of determination and barely contained rage. We're going in hot and fast. Ace, you're on point. Get us down in that swamp quiet as a mouse. Blaze, Gunner, you're our heavy hitters. Anything moves, you light it up. Doc, keep an eye out for any alien nasties. We don't know what kind of fucked up shit Korvax got waiting for us down there. Scout, you're our eyes and ears. Spot trouble before it spots us. The Marines nodded, their faces grim beneath their helmets. They knew the stakes, knew that failure meant not just their own deaths, but the deaths of countless more humans across the galaxy. As the indefatigable touched down in the swamp with a soft squelch, the marines filed out, activating their ghillie suits. The advanced camouflage shimmered and shifted, blending seamlessly with the dense foliage and twisted trees that surrounded them. Richardson took point, his rifle at the ready, as he led his team through the humid, oppressive darkness. The air was thick with the stench of decay and the buzzing of alien insects, their iridescent carapaces glinting in the dim light. Suddenly Scout raised a fist halting the team in their tracks. He pointed to a strange pulsating plant up ahead, its tendrils writhing like serpents. Doc stepped forward, scanner in hand, his brow furrowed in concentration. But before he could get a reading, the plant shuddered and spat out a cloud of spores that engulfed Doc's helmet. He staggered back, 
coughing and gasping, his hands clawing at his neck as he struggled to breathe. Richardson and Blaze were at his side in an instant, their hands on his shoulders as they tried to steady him. But Doc waved them off, his voice ragged but determined. I'm fine, I'm fine. Just got a lungful of alien pollen, that's all. Richardson exchanged a glance with Blaze, his eyes narrowed in concern. But there was no time to dwell on it. They had a mission to complete, and every second counted. As the team pushed deeper into the swamp, Richardson couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The hairs on the back of his neck stood on end, and he found himself scanning the shadows for any sign of movement. Little did he know high above the planet's surface, General Korvac sat in his command centre, a cruel smile playing across his scaly features as he watched the human intruders on his view screen. So the humans think they can infiltrate my fortress, he hissed, his forked tongue flicking out to taste the air. Let them come. Let them see the true might of the Tsenkethi Empire, and let them die screaming as an example to all who would dare oppose us. Korvac turned to his subordinates, his eyes glinting with malice. Unleash the swarm. Let the humans feel the wrath of Corfia Prime. The sun began to sink low on the alien horizon as the marines trudged through the swamp, their boots squelching in the muck. A distant rumble reached their ears, the sound of heavy machinery. Richardson signalled for a halt, and Scout shimmied up a towering tree, its branches gnarled and slick with slime. He peered through the scope of his rifle. "'I've got eyes on the objective,' Scout reported, his voice crackling over the comm. "'Zenkithi Command Center, two clicks northeast, heavily fortified, turrets on every wall, patrols around the perimeter. Gonna be one hell of a tough nut to crack.' Richardson chewed his lip, considering their options. But before he could speak, a retching sound drew his attention. Doc was doubled over, his body convulsing violently. Doc! Ace shouted, rushing to his side. But as he approached, Doc's body began to change. His flesh bubbled and writhed, his bones cracking and reforming. The Marines watched in horror as their comrade transformed before their eyes into a monstrous hybrid of man and Senkethi, all claws and fangs and scales. The creature that had been Doc let out a screech of primal fury and lunged at the nearest marine. Blaze. Razor-sharp claws tore into his armour as the beast pinned him to the ground, slavering jaws snapping inches from his face. Open fire, Richardson roared, and Gunner let loose with his minigun. But the rounds ricocheted harmlessly off the creature's hide, leaving not a scratch. Fall back, Richardson ordered as Ace lobbed a flash grenade at the creature. The blast bought Blaze a precious second to scramble free, his armour torn and bloody. The Marines beat a hasty retreat, crashing through the undergrowth as the abomination pursued them relentlessly. Richardson's mind raced as he ran. The spores from that damn plant, they must have infected Doc somehow, mutated him into this... thing. And if they couldn't find a way to stop it, his blood ran cold at the thought. They'd never make it to the command center, and if even one of them was infected, they could bring this bioweapon horror back to Earth. Richardson gritted his teeth, his finger tightening on the trigger of his rifle. He knew what he had to do, even if it tore him apart inside. They had to neutralize the creature, put it down, no matter that it had once been one of their own. No matter the cost... Richardson and his men scrambled into the underwater caves, gasping for breath as they splashed through the shallow pools. The creature's roars echoed through the tunnels, spurring them onward. Fucking hell, Blaze panted, leaning against a slick cave wall. What now, Cap? Richardson scanned the cave, his mind racing. Suddenly Ace's voice rang out. Cap, check this out! The Marine was crouched by the wall, his gloved hand tracing a patch of glowing blue-green lichen. Richardson hurried over, squinting at the strange growth. Jay scraped a sample into a container, handing it to Richardson. The captain held it up, studying it closely. His eyes widened. I'll be damned, he muttered. It's emitting some kind of pheromone, and I'd bet my left nut it's what's keeping that thing away. Without hesitation, Richardson scooped a handful of the lichen, smearing it across his armor. 
Coat up, boys, he ordered. We're getting the fuck out of here. The marines hastily applied the lichen, the pungent odor filling the cave. Then, with a nod from Richardson, they emerged, weapons at the ready. But as they approached the command center, an eerie sight greeted them. Tsenkethi guards stumbled about in a daze, some clawing at their scales, others turning their weapons on each other. Realization dawned on Richardson. The spores, he said grimly, they've lost control of their own damn bioweapon. He signaled to his men, Gunner scout, find high ground and cover us, the rest of you with me, we're ending this now. They split up, Gunner and scout scaling the facility's walls as Richardson, Ace and Blaze charged inside. Chaos reigned within. Tsenkethi's soldiers, their bodies warping grotesquely, tore into each other with savage ferocity. Screams and gunfire filled the air. Richardson led the way, his rifle barking as they fought through the madness. At last they reached the control room, blasting the door open. Inside, a pitiful sight awaited them. General Korvac, once proud and mighty, cowered behind a console, his uniform shredded and stained with blood. Help me, he begged, his eyes wild. The spores and they were never meant for Corfir Prime. They were only to be used against Earth as a last resort. Richardson leveled his rifle at the general's head, his lip curling in disgust. The codes for the defenses now. Korvac hesitated. Richardson's finger tightened on the trigger. Now! The general frantically typed on the console. Richardson nodded to Ace, who darted forward, inputting the codes. A deep rumble shook the facility as the defenses powered down. Plant the rest of the explosives, Richardson barked. We're getting the hell off this rock. They raced back through the halls, the timer on the bombs ticking down. As they burst out of the command center, a chilling roar froze their blood. The creature, flanked by a horde of mutated Tsenkethi, charged towards them, a nightmarish tide of claws and fangs and twisted flesh. Detonate! Richardson roared over the din of plasma fire and inhuman screeches. Gunner slammed his fist down on the detonator, and the command center exploded in a blinding flash. The shockwaves slammed into the marines like a freight train, hurling them to the ground. Richardson's head swam, his vision blurred and ears ringing. He staggered to his feet, pulling Ace and Blaze up with him. Move! he shouted, his voice barely audible over the ringing in his ears. To the extraction point! The marines sprinted across the scorched earth, dodging debris and leaping over smoldering corpses. But a chilling roar made Richardson's blood run cold. He glanced over his shoulder to see the creature, charred and smoking, but still very much alive, bounding after them. Fuck, it just won't die, Blaze panted, his face streaked with soot and blood. Richardson knew they'd never outrun it. Not like this. He skidded to a halt, turning to face the monstrosity. Keep going, he barked at his men. I'll hold it off. Ignoring their protests, Richardson charged at the creature, firing his rifle until the magazine clicked empty. The creature swiped at him with its massive claws, catching him across the chest and sending him flying. Pain exploded through his body as he slammed into the ground, his armor torn and bloodied. Gritting his teeth, Richardson dragged himself towards the burning command center, leaving a trail of blood in his wake. The creature stalked towards him, its jaws dripping with saliva. Richardson fumbled for his last grenade, priming it with a shaking hand. The creature lunged, its claws outstretched. Richardson rolled the grenade towards it and hurled himself sideways, just as the creature's jaws snapped shut where his head had been a split second before. The grenade detonated, the blast wave slamming Richardson into the ground. Rubble rained down around him, burying the creature under tons of twisted metal and concrete. Richardson lay there, his vision fading in and out, every breath a stabbing agony. He was dimly aware of hands grabbing him, dragging him away from the burning wreckage. Ace and Blaze, their faces grim, hauled him aboard the indefatigable as Gunner lay down covering fire. As the ship lifted off, Richardson caught a final glimpse of the command center, now a raging inferno. The creature's roars echoed through the night, growing fainter and fainter, until they were swallowed by the flames. In the days that followed, 
Richardson and his men were hailed as heroes by the UNS leadership. They had struck a crippling blow against the Tsenkethi, capturing General Korvac and destroying the command center. But as Richardson lay in the med bay, his body racked with pain, he couldn't shake the hollow feeling in his chest. Doc, his friend, his brother, was dead. And the knowledge of the Tsenkethi's bioweapon, a horror beyond imagining, weighed heavily on his soul. He knew this was only the beginning. The Tsenkethi would retaliate, and he would be called upon again to lead the charge. But for now, as the indefatigable hurtled through the void of space, Richardson closed his eyes, a single tear tracing down his battered cheek. He would grieve for Doc, for the peace of his own humanity that died on that cursed planet. And then he would do what he always did. He would fight. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video. Then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.